video. Thank you very much for your interest. Appreciate your company, your time. Maria Zuru asked for a video on fertilizing oncidiums. Here it is, Maria. Thank you very much for your question. And this actually stemmed from my video of how to fertilize from zero to 300 parts per million, what to look out for. It was a general video and I focus on the roots, how much I fertilize and when I fertilize. Fertilizing oncidiums is not that much different. I also go by root size. There are certain specifics though that I would like to point out and I hope that this video will be helpful, not just for inorganic growing. This would apply to organic growing as well as any oncidiums that you may have mounted. There's a few little things that need to be tweaked when you have a mounted oncidium, things that you need to look out for, especially with regards to humidity, airflow, and heat. And there's another thing with regards to organic growing. The one exception is that the pH would differ to my pH growing inorganically. I grow mainly in LECA and self-watering. I use a lot of lava rock in some cases as well. And that also includes ceramis. So inorganic growing is what I'm referring to here. Everything I speak about with regards to fertilizer parts per million. My fertilizer is a balanced fertilizer, so I'm not talking about the supplements like a CalMag or seaweed. I'm just talking about basic fertilizing in this video. That includes calcium and magnesium in my fertilizer. So I just wanna make that clear. When I speak of zero to 100, I am referring to the parts per million that is the fertilizer after it has gone in to the water, not including whatever TDS is in the water. So I'm just referring zero to 300 based on the quantity of fertilizer going into the water. And it is a balanced fertilizer, including calcium, magnesium, excluding any talk of supplements. The inorganic growing allows me to fertilize at 6.3 pH throughout my entire collection. If you're growing in organic media, then I would recommend to raise the pH to 6.5. And then you have to know how acidic is your pot? Is your media fresh? Is it starting to break down? If it's starting to break down, repots are required because the organic media will obviously break down in the pot, making it more acidic. So a 6.5 pH may not have the same effect on older media than it would with fresher media. So I hope that makes sense. If you want another specific video about that, I don't have an example to show you with regards to organic growing, but I can talk about it. And if that's what you would like, let me know in the comments below and I will go into further detail with regards to organic growing, pH levels and nutrient absorption at its maximum in our pots. I know there's a lot of disclaimers. I have to put that out there because it's not a one fits all kind of situation. We have environment to contend with. We have to contend with if it is a controlled environment, if it's outdoor growing. I mean, there's a lot of factors. So I grow outdoors mainly for nine months of the year in Southern Spain, where my humidity normally is at around 30%, especially in the growing season. And that is why I grow in LECA and self-watering. Apart from the fact that it is economically much more feasible for me, it is also easier for me to control which pot gets what at what time. So I'm gonna be discussing zero to 100, zero to 160, zero to 300, and anything in between. We are dealing usually with oncidiums that are complex hybrids. Lots and lots of genera get mixed in. Only a species will then qualify for zero to 100 or 160, depending on what it's doing. Species grow much, much slower. They also have a kind of a rest phase. I say that in inadvertent commas. The rest phase could be just growing roots or maturing bulbs. And then a species oncidium will actually do somewhat nothing in between that, and that's where then you go to zero parts per million. And in the case of what is supposedly my varicosum here, I've had her now for almost four years. She's never bloomed for me, and I'm not entirely sure this is a varicosum, but this is what I bought her as. But you see, I have very fine roots in the pot, very small lecker. It is a self-watering pot. So I'm not going to go and say that for every orchid. This is the standard by which I have my oncidiums growing. But is the root size is what is of interest to me. And when it comes to small, fine roots like these, 
I go to 100 parts per million, sometimes 160 depending on the time of year. We're now heading into the cooler months of the year, so I've piped down to 100 parts per million because she is sending out two more growths of the season. So she's already matured her first growth of the season. There's two behind those. And here we have two more. But because it is cooler, they're not growing as fast, the metabolism is slowing down, I have reduced my fertilizer level to 100 parts per million, whereas in the summer she would get 160. And I base that because of the size of the roots. This being a species, and even if she is mislabeled, I can tell that she's a species because she's very, very slow. And she will go for months without doing anything, in adverted commas. There's no movement. And you can see she grows roots at the same time that she's growing new growths. So in this case, I go from zero to 160 when her growth start in the beginning of the growing season, spring, summer. And then when she stops growing, I go back down to zero, I just flush. And now that she's setting out a second flush of growths and roots, and the season is cooler, I have reduced my fertilizer to 100 parts per million. Fine roots, species, slower grower, climate. These factors are taken into consideration with what she's doing and how much she gets. So in this case, zero, 160, back to 100, and then it'll be zero again throughout the winter. Whether I will ever see blooms on her is secondary, but at least she's bulking up. Before I get to the case of the Miltonia sunset, let me show you the Peggy Ruth Carpenter. And I'm going to now consider this like mm, small, medium, small kind of roots. And this one is also a very vigorous orchid. She has her quirks. There's a Care Collab video for her in my Care Collab playlist, but she has her quirks. But let's just go with what she's doing. She is now getting 160 parts per million based on the fact that it is late in the season. She is starting to mature her bulbs. She is in spike, but it is about the roots. So during the summer, I was not even filling this pot up with 300 parts per million because she was a recovering orchid. 160 is plenty. The growths are growing quite nicely. The fact that she's blooming, she is going to be okay and she is happy. So this one is actually zero to 160 right off the bat, the minute new growth show. In between any kind of activity after blooming, she also goes into a kind of a rest and doesn't grow any new growth back to back to back, as some Oncidium alliances do. That's when I just go with zero and all I do is flush her through. Let's go to what I consider in my collection a medium-sized root system. This is a wildcat. And here I have an orchid that also grows quite vigorously. At the moment, she's getting 160 parts per million, also for the reasons of being the time of year. Her growth are slowing down. Everything is sort of still growing, but much slower. But during the summer, because she is a big orchid, even though the roots are medium, the mass of the orchid, the size of the orchid, also determines how much fertilizer she will get and what she can absorb. The idea always being you want your media on the top to be mineral deposit free. So the balance of the fertilizer will also give you a clean surface of the pot. She gets in the summer 300 parts per million when her new growths grow. Right now she is maturing some of the growths that came later in the season. So I've dropped the fertilizer to 160 also because she is spiking. So take that into consideration, no matter the time of year, if your orchid is coming into spike, even though the bulbs have matured, you still want to be fertilizing and encouraging that spike so that it doesn't deplete any energy from the structures of the orchid itself. So we have zero to 100, sometimes 160, based on the time of year. Zero to 160, sometimes 300, based on the time of year, based on the size of the roots as well. 0 to 300, sometimes 160, root size, mass of the orchid, time of year. These are the factors I take into consideration when I fertilize the orchids that are getting larger. And we will now go to an orchid that has 
big roots, big structures before we get back to Miltonia sunset. This is Colmenara Masai Red, the orchid that I consider the biggest oncidium that I ever had, ever will have, because I cannot accommodate her size properly, but the size of her roots are what show me what I need to do with regards to fertilizing. Now you can only see one coming out right here, and even though it's dead and desiccated, but this is a very, very thick root. Gracias would also have, in some cases, very, very thick roots, extremely vigorous. And she grows her roots the moment that she starts new growths. So you see the structures on this orchid. This is enormous. And this is where I just go to 300 parts per million. Even now, late in the season, and her metabolism may have slowed down, but these structures, I can't do 200 or 160. Regardless of this orchid's metabolism, her structures, her roots, her bigger, these growths need to get pumped up. So I go from with her from zero to 300 straight away, no matter the time of year, just to support what is coming. So these growths here and here and here, <laughs> back there, they are all in the process of developing roots. Zero to 300, large roots, large structures, and no matter the time of year, big oncidiums in general, they need to be fertilized to the max in order to develop properly. Excuse the fact that mine looks sunburnt or humidity, lack, of, lack thereof, excuse that, has nothing to do with the fertilizer. You can see that my leca on the top is absolutely clean. This is not even flush today. And that is, she can take it. She could probably take a little bit more, but with my fertilizing, how I make up my water, that is plenty of work for me. The minute that she absorbs all the reservoir anyway is when I go and fill her up again. So if she absorbs all that water within two or three days, she'll get another load of 300. And then that would mean 600 during the week. You know, how often you have to fill up a reservoir based on how thirsty the orchid is also determines if you are actually doubling the amount that she is getting. I hope that makes sense but I don't want to risk any kind of mineral buildup on any of the pots by making my life easier and just saying, well, she can take 600. I don't want to do that because I just want to make sure that the surface of the media stays salt free. If it's necessary, I will just fill up the reservoir twice a week. Back to Miltonia sunset. Right, recent acquisition, well, recent as in 2021. And here comes the situation with rescues. Rescues need a lot of water humidity around the base without wanting to rot the base and the pseudobulbs. But we need to encourage root growth and that again determines your environment, how humid is it in your environment and what media you're using. But rule of thumb is humidity around the base to encourage root growth. In my case, this is pumice. So when it is a rescue orchid, no fertilizer at all. Maybe a touch of seaweed, maybe a little bit of foliar spraying with calcium, magnesium, and some seaweed, lots of airflow, but basically no fertilizer in the pot if there are no roots in the pot. A lot of flushing just to keep the oxygen going through the pot, keeping the media clean, waiting for new roots to grow so that they don't touch any salts. And at this stage, fine roots, I don't have many roots in the pot to my understanding, I'm just going to pretend that this orchid doesn't have roots in the pot. But to my understanding, this is what I've got at the surface and I wanna maintain the health of the roots. So what I'm doing is I'm just continuously flushing, flushing through the surface of the pot, now touching the roots with some fresh RO water, encouraging them to go down by keeping the reservoir filled. Now that looks a bit nasty, but that's just dust. There is no fertilizer or anything down here. When I mist the surface of the pot with calcium, magnesium, and seaweed at this point in time, I make sure that I am not far behind with plain RO water to flush through. It turns out that this orchid does have viable roots in the pot, but please, I'm just referring back to 
what happens when you get new roots on a rescue oncidium into generic orchid. A lot of flushing, maintaining the surface of the media clean, mineral deposit free, and then eventually at this point, when they get to this length, clean water to flush through, touching the roots, getting them accustomed to water, and occasionally spraying with seaweed, calcium and magnesium, but being very, very quick to go back and flush out and clean up those roots so that they don't dry out too quickly and nothing burns. This is obviously the future of the orchid and we wanna make sure that we bring them through safe and sound, get them into the pot and then the orchid is on her way. And then because it is a fine root system but she's a super vigorous orchid, 160 parts per million. So you see the example and the numbers I'm throwing around they might sound a little bit of a jumble, but it is important to know what is the orchid doing? What are its growth attributes? When is it good to go with regards to how many parts per million we are able to put in the pot? Knowing the orchid is the basis of successful fertilizing, in my opinion, bar any other interference with pests, etc. Let's just take all that out of the equation. Knowing the attribute of the orchids, and I will always champion roots above flower spike. So I look at the roots, when are they starting, what is in my pot, even if I get the orchid in new, what have I got to work with? If my roots are fine, I will never go beyond 160 parts per million unless it is a big orchid with a lot of mass to it. Then I will venture to 300 and also large roots. But for these candidates, 160 will work perfectly, also taking in consideration how quickly they absorb their reservoir. Because if you have 160 parts per million, like with the coal Monara that we just saw, 160 parts per million in here with a big mass like this in the pot with lots of roots, it will also absorb the reservoir within two or three days. And you're putting in another 160 parts per million. And then you've already doubled the amount of parts per million that this Oncidium would get. So attributes are fundamental to know how much to fertilize. If you're beginning to learn a new orchid because it's come new into your collection, the size of the roots will never ever fail you in making that decision as to how much you need to fertilize. I really hope that this makes sense, Maria or anybody else that has watched, listened to this video. I hope that this is easy to understand root size, attributes, your environment, organic growing, inorganic or on a mount. I would like to discuss a little bit more about mounts, but maybe for a later video. This is already getting far too long. But again, if you have mounted oncidiums and you want me to touch on that, I do not have any mounted oncidiums, but I can talk about it. I have other orchids that are mounted with different root sizes and I can definitely talk about it. So let me know in the comments below. If I didn't elaborate on something, if something wasn't clear also, please let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope that this somewhat made sense and was helpful. Thank you so very, very much for your time here with me today. I hope that everything is well in your part of the world and that you have a very, very beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.